Amen. Amen. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, thank you all for joining at Midweek Bible Study. Uh, it is our prayer that all the members of Living World Christian Church, that you are all somewhere safe and warm. Uh, we've done our best to kind of try to reach out and and check on those who we could. Um, I, it's my prayer that your family group leader has reached out to you. Um, there's some of y'all we have on a prayer list. We have a few that had some water breaks and some that are still currently out, uh, um, currently out with uh, electricity at this time. And so uh, we're still praying for you all if you're here doing them live stream. We ourselves, we got electricity this morning at 8. And so we've been holding electricity ever since. If it was not so, uh, we couldn't come to you. But we thank God that God has made a way for us to be here tonight uh, in our midweek service, that we've been able to preach the gospel uh, and go live. We thank God for the, the means and media to be able to still uh, do what God has called us to do. So let us go into a word of prayer. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We honor you tonight. We thank you, God, for this opportunity, God, to go into your word. We thank you, God, for all the members of Living Word Christian Church. And we pray, God, that they are safe out of harm's way, God. We thank you, God, that you surround them with their warmth, God. We thank you, God, that you're giving them the water that they need, God. We pray, God, for any mishaps, God, any circumstances that may arrive out of this ice storm, this snowstorm, God, that you're blessing, that you're covering, God, that you're making way out of no way, God. We continue to lift up our sister Samantha. We pray, God, you continue to give her recovering grace, God. We thank you, God, that by your stripes, she's already healed, God. We lift our hand to thee right now, God. We stretch our hands, God, that you may touch our sister, God, from the top of her head to the sole of her feet, God. And we thank you that what you're doing in her body. We thank you, God, what you're doing in the midst of Living Word Christian Church. And we thank you for what you're going to do in this Bible study. And we give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. So we thank God tonight. Amen. We want to go to 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. Go with me to 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. And we're going to look at verse number 1. 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, verse number 1. And I'm going to ask you tonight as we uh, go through Bible study that you keep your Bible with you. That You know how we do in Bible study. If we give you our opinion, we're not talking about nothing. But we want to uh, bag up what we're going to say in the scripture up on tonight. And we're going to deal with the topic, true love. True love. And uh, going into 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, beginning at verse number 13, the Bible says, Though I speak with tongues of men <clears throat> and of angels and have not charity, I am, am, I am become as something, as, as a resounding branch or as a timbling symbol. As I have the gifts of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and, and, and though I have all faith, so that I have could, that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I destroy all, and I, although I destroy all my destroy all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, to to to, to, to be burned and have not charity. It profited me nothing. Charity suffers long, and it is kind. Charity is envious not. Charity vaunteth not itself, not itself, nor it is puffed up. Does not behave itself unseemly. Seek not her own. It is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Uh, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoice in truth. Breatheth all things, believeth all things, hope all things, endureth all things. Charity never fail, but there, where, where there is prophecy, there shall, there shall fail. Where there is tongues, there shall cease. Where there, there be knowledge, it shall, van, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But, but, but when that which is perfect is come, then which is part shall be done away of. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see, though a, gla a glass, darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even also am I known. 
and now abideth faith, hope, charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. Amen. They've been reading to God's word. Amen. And if you read through this scripture in uh, 1 Corinthians, it's talking about the gift of love, the gift of love. And a lot of places in the scripture when it was talking about charity, it's really that char er, charity right there is revelation, or not revelation, in the Greek is translated love. And so I want to go back up, and I really wanted to read this scripture out using the love. And, and you know, in King James Version, it say charity, and a lot of verses just say love. But I just kind of want to hit a couple of scriptures Amen. And want to translate the word from charity over to love. It says, love suffereth long and kind. Love envieth not. Love vaunteth not itself and is not puffed up. Does not behave itself uh, un unseemly. Seeketh out her own. Is not equally provoked. Thinketh not evil. Uh, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in truth. Beareth all things, believe all things, hope in all things, endureth all things. Love never fails. And we know we've been dealing with, uh, we've been dealing with talking about the source. And uh, on Bible study a couple of weeks ago or last week, we talked about how uh, uh, the source itself, that we have to understand the true love of Christ, amen, in order to tap into the source, that we understand that the love is a two-way street, amen, that love all flows up and love also flows down. When we get an understanding as a body of Christ that, that we have to love God with all our heart, all our mind, and all our soul, and lean out to our own understanding, amen, and have the love of God that we're willing to please God, that also in return that the love flows down, and God loves us so much that he won't leave us in the circumstance that we're in. We've talked about that before. So God is allowing us to make a transition dealing with God being the source, amen, and moving over to an area of true love. I'm not saying that this is going to be a series, but this is where God has me, and it triggered me in my direction to study when we were in Bible study. So we're moving in an area of saying that God is our source, or God was our source, and we understand that since God is our source, amen, that we tap into the love of God, and not only tap into the love of God, but we display the love of God in order to have the source displayed in the earth. Amen. So which we have to understand, if we're going to operate or According to the source's power and its character, we need to find ourselves flowing in love. So we understand, we should know by now out the 10 series that God is our source. So if we're going to operate according to the source's power and character, I did that twofold. I said we have to operate against the, God, the source's power and its character. So as we receive the love of Christ, or we receive the power of God, we have to operate in the character of the source, which is love. So a lot of times people got to say, you know what, I have to flow in the anointing, I got to operate in the anointing, I have to move in the anointing, but baby, if we don't have no love, the anointing can't flow. Right. If we don't have no love, the anointing can't operate. No love, no God. Hmm. No God, no power. So we have to understand, we can't separate God from his love. Again, no love, no God. No God, no power. First John, the fourth chapter, verse number, I said, God is love. So when we're talking about moving in the love power of God, we're talking about moving in the love of God. Oh my God, that's, that, that's good because I think sometimes we get so busy in our gift. We get so busy in our operations, amen, that we forget about the love part. We want to see a great move of God. We want to see the outpouring of God's spirit. We want to see the outpouring of God's presence, but we forget about the love. We forget about that. And I don't have the love of Christ on the inside of me, amen. I can't operate in the, in the power of God because you can't separate God from his love. And so in the text here, if you allow me to just, just, just break it down just a little bit, in the text here, amen, what Paul is trying to get over to the church of Corinth, amen, he's saying that it's not mere uh, possession of gifts or being anointed. It's not about the gifts of being anointed, but rather, more importantly, that we exercise the gift of the spirit of love. So he said it's not about your gift. It's not about your anointing, but more importantly, it's more about the love uh, that we operate in, the spirit of love or the gift of love. Amen. People
people have a tendency of taking chapter 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, out of context. And the reason why I say I didn't have a tendency to take that out of context, because theologians would say that it's in chapter 13 that a design to uh, that a design was to, to relieve the tension of talking about spiritual gifts and tongues. It, it, they, they say it's designed to relieve the tension of uh, what Paul was dealing with in chapter 12 when he's dealing with the spiritual gift and then going into the gift of tongues. And so he was saying here, this, they, the Lord was saying this was intention to relieve that tension that Paul was dealing with. All right. But but that was not the case. What Paul was doing right here. Paul was arguing in chapter 13 was a virtual part of love. It should be accompanied by I get. So what he's saying is the vital point here, what I'm saying is that your love should be accompanied by your gift. All right. And so the Bible says in verse number one, let me get that verse number one. I'm going to use the word love. It says, though I speak with tongues of men and angels and have not love, I have become as a sounding brass. Or a trembling symbol. And so he was saying, it doesn't matter how anointed you are, that if we don't have the love of Christ on the inside of us, that gift that you have sounds like this when it's going or trying to anyway, and you're trying to operate the things of the kingdom of God. Y'all know I use an example a lot of times that, that I myself is not necessarily about the gift, amen, because I wouldn't necessarily consider myself gifted, but it's about the anointing of God, what God has called me to do. And so uh, a lot of people are gifted to preach. I mean, they, they, they know how to just hit it just right. They know how to put the tune in, and, and, and they know how to raise their voice and idol the things and all that kind of thing. And they got the gift of preaching, amen. But do we have the anointing of God? to go along with the gift. That's the key. Amen. God has given the body of Christ the giftings of the works they need, amen, to fulfill the purpose that God has called you to do. But do we have the anointing to do it? And I've come to put on the table tonight if there's no love walk, if there's no love talk, if there's no love in action, amen, the power source is not available to us to operate the gift that God has called us to operate in. Because listen, if we choose to just stay in the gift Amen. The Bible said gifts and calling are out with or without repentance. But I need the supernatural power of God. I just don't want to sing. I want to sing. I just don't want to sing a song. I just don't want to make a draw for noise. But if that's what God called me to do, I need to be anointed to do it. Sometimes you can say someone that can just really, they can just, they got the vocal cords, they can just, they can sing and they can just, they can sing great. Amen. And they can just, they, they, they just sing. And we say, oh, that, that was that was that was awesome. I mean, they they sounded really good. But when you got that person, they may not be just as gifted to sing, to go to the high notes and low notes, but they are anointed to do what they call to do. They'll tear the church up. They'll tear the church up. I never remember long ago when I was a young minister coming up, and there was a young man, and this guy could, I, I was infatuated by how this guy could preach. Oh, I mean, he could preach and he could he could preach and he I mean, and he, he just knew exactly it's purple outside and he knew exactly how to put it and he was the most gifted man I have ever seen and I always used to always wonder I say, why is is the ministry not growing the way he preaches? Why why is he still in the same condition that he is the, with, as, as gifted that he is in preaching? And God, when I was thinking about that one day when I was studying this, and God reminded me, he said, you said it just right because he was gifted to preach. And so we have to have the anointing. Listen, if you are operating in a gift with no love, you can use that gift as a weapon. And so we got to be careful, amen, with the things that God has, has trusted us with. Because if we operate out of anger and out of gift, that thing could be a weapon against the body of Christ and against the people of God. And I don't want to be found guilty as that individual, the gift that God has given me for the body of Christ, if I'm not using it out of love, amen, using it as a weapon. Because I've seen so many times again where pastors use the pulpit, amen, as a weapon to condemn the people. That, that pastors have used the pulpit as a weapon, amen, to beat the people up, amen. And it's too much from Genesis to Revelation to teach and preach about, to preach about, to use it as a weapon. 
Amen. If we are prophesying and, and, and we are operating in the office of a prophet, amen, if we're not operating out of a place of love, we can use that gift as a weapon. And, and whatever, listen, when God has called us to do something, and if we operate in the love of God, that means we're operating in the power of God, and I can be a preacher and he can tell me to preach fire and brimstone. Amen. But at the end of the day, if it's done out of love, it's going to encourage somebody. Yes. It's going to lift somebody up. I remember, remember long ago that I had, a, God told me and I preached on tithes and offering. And I was preaching on tithes and offering. And, and, and I was preaching the way God given. It was done out of love. And at the end of that message, we was pre we were shouting all over the church. We were shouting. Amen. And the deacon came up to me after the service was over. He said, Pastor, I ain't never seen a church shout the way they shouting right now. Over tithes and offering. And it wasn't because of the gift of the message. It was because love was behind the message. Amen. And so no matter what the office is. Amen. God can send you to a place to correct. But when it's done out of love. It'll build somebody up. Amen. God never gives a gift to turn the body of Christ down. God gives a gift to build the body of Christ up. Amen. So we have to be careful. Amen. And have to recognize. I don't want to just operate in a gift. I need to flow in the love of Christ. Right. And when you're saying I need to flow in the love of Christ, you're saying I need to flow in the anointing. Hallelujah. Hmm. I need to flow in the anointing. It was an, it, it was apparent, watch this, it was apparent from Paul's writing that there was some operating in the gifts of God in self-motivation, hmm. self-edification, self-gratification, and self-qualification. And he said, Pastor, where'd you get all that? Because he had to address the issue again. He was just dealing in chapter 12 about the gifts. We know that he's dealing in chapter 14 about the gifts of tongues. And so now he had to pause and say, wait a minute. We have to have love before we have any of these things. Right. And so it lets me know there had to be some issues he was dealing with with some self-motivation. So some people that was operating in the gifts of God had some hidden agendas. Hmm. And so the love wasn't there. And since, well, since the love wasn't there, amen, they, there was self-motivation. And not only self-motivation, there was self-edification. You see, because when you're doing something for the body of Christ, if you're trying to flow in anointing or you're operating in the, in the, in the, in the source, and then you recognize the source as the power, you recognize God as the power, and you say, listen, I can't do this, my God, to God be all the glory. Right. I love God so much, amen, that this is not about self-edification, but this is about the love of Christ, amen. I do this for two reasons. I do this because, first of all, I love God. Mm -hmm. And then I love God, and then I love the people of God. Listen, if there's no love of Christ in your heart, amen, you're trying to operate the gifts of God, or you're trying to operate in ministry, amen, you're trying to operate in the wrong capacity. T.D. Jake said one time, and I give him credit, I call him a lot, but I give him credit on this one. He said, the problem that some of the churches, not all of the churches, but the problem some of the churches have is that we have brought the corporate mentality into the church. We have tried to use the corporate, we have tried to use our gifts and talents, amen, amen. We have tried to use the source, amen, with a corporate mentality. And we have to change the mindset and say, listen, I, if, I, if I never preach again in the church that God has assigned me to, I still have to have the love of Christ on the inside of me. I love Elder Sharp used to say this. Elder Sharp said, son, I don't need a pulpit to preach. I preach every day in the grocery store. I preach every day when I go to my mailbox and I see my neighbor. I preach every day when I go on my job. And so we have to understand that this thing is not about self edification. Uh, it, see me. It's me. See me. See me. Oh, let me get out front. Well, this thing is about the love of Christ. God, where would you have me? Lord, would you, what would you have me to do? And then not only God, what would you have me to do? God, how would you have me to do? This is not about self-edification. This is about the love of Christ. And then it's about self-gratification. See, there's a part of scripture in the Bible that says that people that walk in self-gratification, they have their reward while they're on the earth. Mm -hmm. And see, my have to walk in the love of Christ that this thing is about the kingdom. That this thing is about the kingdom. That, that I want to expand the kingdom. I want to expand the kingdom in the earth. 
that whenever God is going to do something mighty in the earth, he's going to raise up somebody. He's going to raise up somebody in the earth to move it through. And that individual has to be or have to connect to the source and operate in love. If, if, if I don't have the love of Christ in me, how can I say, God, disport, the, 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 put the millions on me, Lord? And if I don't have the love of Christ in me, I hold on to the millions. But if I have the love of Christ in me, God can trust me to put the millions on me, that the scripture may come alive in me, that he gives seed to the soul. Because he knows that I have so much love for him, that I have so much love for the body of Christ, that I would do exactly with it what God has told me to do. Mm. And then I said self-qualification. Self because truly, if we got those that are operating in the kingdom of God, and they're operating outside of love, they had to qualify themselves. They had to, they had to choose their own qualifications. Amen. And said, I met my own needs. In order to move in the things of God. There's a difference between the gift and the power. But children of God, people of God, we have to have the love. Love is this. Love is a strong, strong, intense affection for another person or thing. Arising out of kinship and personal ties. And I thought Wes was right on it right there. Because he said it's a long, a strong, intense affection for something or someone. And it says it's either out of kinship or personal ties. And see, and God said, listen, we should have both when it's concerning our source. We should have both when it's concerning the true love. Because he said, we're joined as right. We're children of the most high God. That's your kinship. We're children of the Most High God. Join heirs with Christ. That's your, you are king's kid. You are somebody in the Lord. That's your kinship right there. But the second part is, we should also have such a relationship with God that the love of God is displayed on us and through us. Mm -hmm. And so there should be a kinship, and there should also be a personal tie that we have that we display the love of God. Jesus said it this way. If I can quote Jesus in John 17, chapter, verse number 23. He says, in them, I in them, and thou in me, that I may be made perfect in one kinship, and that, and that, and that they, and that the wood, they may know that they, thou, thou host sent me and has loved them Love them as thou hast loved me. Then he goes down to verse number 26 and says, And I have declared unto them thy name. And I will declare it that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. So listen, love connects us to the source. Love connects us to the source. And Jesus wants to multiply himself in the earth. That the true love may flood the earth. That the true love may flood the earth. So I say, keep your Bibles. The question we want to answer tonight, we build all the way up to this. The question we want to answer tonight, why do we want to operate in true love? Now we kind of addressed it, talked about the source and, and, and God, God himself is love. But it's some points that I have give, God has given me. I'm not going to stay in them long. But why do we want to operate in true love? Because uh, there's no hindrance in true love. There's no hindrance in true love. Hindrance is this. Hindrance means to be held back from progress, a stumbling block, obstacles. And so when we as children of God, when we operate in the true love, the true love of Christ, amen, amen, we now are in a position where the love of God, or we're connected to the source, they remove obstacles and hindrance out of our way. Let's go to 1 John. And y'all got to forgive me, y'all. My lighting is bad. Y'all know my, my lighting is bad. I'm having a hard time. I don't have my Bible. I use the preacher of the church. These words are really, really small. That's why I'm pausing on these words that I can barely see. Amen. And so, let's go to 1 John, the second chapter. 
And we want to go to verse 10 and 11. And it says this. He that loved his brother abided in the light. And there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hated his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whether he goeth because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. So basically he said here is that when we are in the love of Christ, we walk in the light. And when we walk in the light, there is no stumbling. I think this is a perfect example. I just talked about how when we did Sunday morning, it was daytime. We had the blinds open. We had there's one that's to the side of me, y'all can't see. And I was able to see great. I was able to see real good. But tonight, I mean, it's nighttime. And the night's a little dim, and, and these words are small. And since these words are small, there's a darkness, and there's a stumbling block for Pastor. <laughs> there's a stumbling block for me. And I was like, okay. And, and, what, and, and I'm trying to, even in my notes, I'm trying to, I can barely see them. I got to, Holy Ghost help me. But see, but in the darkness, hmm. there's a stumbling block. But I want to go back up to verse 10. He said, he that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is no, and there's none occasion of stumbling. He said, there's no occasion of stumbling when you have the love. Mm -hmm. He said, in him, but when he's in darkness. So we have to make sure that I'm connected to the source, amen, and I'm displaying the love that the light of God. It's a lot easier to move in the light than it is the darkness. Come on. I don't know about you, amen, but I don't have time for no more stumbling. I don't have time, amen, to miss the mark. And so I got to remove all obstacles out of my way, amen. And when I keep the darkness and I keep, when I don't have love on the inside of me, amen, it brings about darkness and I can't flourish the way I desire to flourish. Oh, but when the morning comes. When the light comes, the Bible says that the word of God is a light into our feet and, and a lamp into our path. Amen. Amen. That, that, that when we allow the light to come, the no more stumbling shall be upon us. Mm -hmm. The second thing, love gives a firm foundation. Did you know that, uh, that we know that in the beginning was God? The word was God, the word with, was with God. And so the love of God, amen, has a firm foundation. And we already said in 1 John, he said that, that God is love. So if the word God was in the beginning, that means love is in the beginning. Mm -hmm. God created the world because of love. Mm -hmm. God saved the world because of love. God so loved the world that he gave. Mm -hmm. And so there's a foundation in it. Let's go to Matthew. We're going to go to Matthew 22, verse 37. And it said, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And then the second one is like unto is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And on these two commandments hang all the laws and the prophets. And so love gives us our firm foundation. God gives us what the commandments are. And then he said, on these two is the foundation of everything. On the foundation of love, the first one is love God, then love your neighbor. Hmm. He said, on these two, dealing with love, loving me, the connecting to the source going up, and then the source connecting coming down. On these two, we can hang everything else. As, as Bishop Williams said, calling the dogs, put out the fire to hunt souls. When we grab the concept of the love, he said, hang everything else. You know, since we've been in this outage, uh, I have a neighbor. And my neighbor uh, has been battling, been in a coma, been in a hospital for two weeks, so I know, I knew that they were they were over there and, and you know, they, it was some needs. And I took them some firewood, and then as I took them some firewood, Sister Sharp cooked some, 
food once when we had some power and we took them over some uh, we took them over some food and he texted me back and he texted me back and said, Jerry, thank you so much that 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 that, that your wife was able to buy this this chicken for us. This is the best chicken I ever had, you know. You know, you know, I'm gonna leave that alone. But but this is the best chicken that we ever had. And in my response to him, I said this. I said, the scripture tells me to love thy neighbor as thyself. I said, so you don't have to think me. You, can, you don't have to think me. That's my reason of a duty. That's my duty is to love my neighbor. I said, so what we can do is give God the glory. So what happens when we allow love to be our foundation? Not only are we drawing someone else to the body of Christ, but God get the glory. Now watch this. Now God get the glory. Since God get the glory, amen, you cannot outdo God. Hmm. And since God get the glory, God said, wait a minute, I'm getting the glory for this. I'm going to put the glory back on you. Oh, my God. And so, and so we have to understand that this love gives a, a firm foundation. Shoot over to Luke real quick. Luke, the sixth chapter. Look at Luke, the sixth chapter. Look at verse number 47. In verse 48, whosoever is coming to me and hear these sayings of fans and doing them, will I show them whom show them who is like them. And then verse 48 says, Am I? Yeah. And then verse 46 says, He is like a man which built it and house and, and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the and when the foundation, and when the flood arose, and the storm beat violently up upon the house, and could not shake it, for it was it was founded upon a rock. And so, listen, he said, listen, when the if the house is established on a firm foundation, which is what what we're talking about, love. So if the house is established on a firm foundation. When the storm comes, it can't be moved. When you establish on the love of Christ, and that love is going forward, up, and that love is coming back down, when the storm comes, you can't be moved because you got to understand that God, don't, because you love God, and God loves you so much, he won't leave you there. He won't let you be defeated. He won't let you be destroyed because the love is your foundation. And then as I move on, the third thing I said, there is no burden in love. There's no burden in love. We can go right back to our golden text in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 8. We can go right back to our golden text in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 8. Read that for me, Sister Shaw. Charity never faileth. But can stop right there. There is no burden in love. Love doesn't fail. There's no, I don't, I don't have to worry because I know the love of Christ that's inside my house, my heart. Love never fails. And since I know love never fails, amen, I don't have to have a burden. I don't have to carry the burden. He's died. He loved me so much that he died to remove the burdens. And so love never fails. Go to 1 John. 1 John, the fourth chapter. Look at verse 17 and 18. 1 John, the fourth chapter. Look at verse 17 and 18. It's a short verse. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear because fear has tormented. He, hath fear, he that feareth is not made perfect in love. Made perfect in love. Love made perfect. He said there's no, there's boldness in the days of judgment because he has, uh, because there is no fear in love. And so when we have to, we walk in love, I don't have fear because I know God has my back. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to this last thing and I'm going to get out of here. Amen. When I operate in the love of God, there is a release power on my life like never before. Now, because why? We're connected to the source. And since we're connected to the source, there's a release of power on my life. Galatians, the fifth chapter. Galatians, the fifth chapter. 
we get verse 5 and 6, it's just short. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Amen. So we work our faith by love. And so this release, my faith is activated because I'm operating in the love of Christ. Amen. It's not, it, yes, your faith is contingent on your belief system. But also you have to understand that your faith is also, your, 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 your faith is released through the love of God that you have. And so also Proverbs 8 chapter verse 20 and verse 21 says this. I lead in the way of righteousness and in the midst of the path of judgment that I may call those that love me to inherit substance and I will fill their treasures. Can I say read that one more time verse 21? That I may call those that love me to inherit substance. It releases power in your life through the love. He said, inherit substance and will fill their treasures. I know so many of us right now need our treasures filled. I don't know about you, but there's so many things that I still believe in God for. And so I can't allow anything or anybody to get me out of the love of Christ, to get me out of the love of God. I'll put it this way. There's too much at stake. There's too much at stake, amen, amen, to disconnect myself to the love of Christ. Mm -hmm. Paul said, what shall separate you from the love of Christ? And so we have to make our mind up, nothing will. Because I don't need any more hindrances in my life. I have to make the love of God in my source, my foundation. Let the burdens of God be removed, or the burdens of the world be removed through the love of God. And that God's power be released in my life. And so we thank God for y'all tonight. Amen. That's all I have. Again, um, we want to make sure that everyone continue to pray for one another. Continue to pray that we remain, remain safe. Amen. That we remain uh, warm. And we continue to lift up Sister Sam as she recovered. We thank God for each and everybody. If there's some kind of prayer request you may have, most of the members, y'all have our telephone numbers. Text us, call us, or even put it, type in your prayer request on the screen. Amen. If we go back and review, uh, we'll look what your prayer request is. If you don't know us personally, and you may be you timing in from somewhere else. And so we want to take this time to pray. Father, we thank you right now. We give you praise. We give you glory. We honor you, O God that you are the King of kings and you are the Lord of lords. We bless you, God, that you are our bright and morning star. Let the true love of you, God, be displayed in our lives, God. And we give you praise, we give you glory. Continue, God, to cover us, oh God, here in Texas. Continue, God, to wrap your arms around us, God, that we may, oh God, make it out of this snowstorm, God. We thank you that all is well with us, all is well with the members of Living World Christian Church, all is well, well with the Southwest region of the Covenant Fellowship and all the pastors they're in. They may be experiencing, oh Father, God, the conditions of the weather. And we thank you right now that we dismiss from this place, God. Yes. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. It's in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Don't forget, you can go online to give your Wednesday night offering at www.livingwordtexas.com. Go there to give. Amen. Be a blessing to the body of Christ. God bless you. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.